Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode in which we are going to continue working with the Nimplant C2 framework recently open sourced by Kuten. Now, I'm really curious to know how the network traffic looks like and how we can customize the network traffic so that we don't stand out during a raid team operation using Nimplant. Let's get started. So in the previous video, we've generated an implant and then we've run it and we try to interact with it from the web user interface because uh, there is also a terminal or command line tool. So let's uh, trigger a callback. This is what we've done in the previous video, if you recall. If not, feel free to check it out. So as you can see, we receive a prompt here. So it's a command line that allow me to run the same commands as um, I can do in the web interface. So as you can see here, I have my callback here and the same command has been run on both interfaces. Now, I'm really curious to know how the network traffic looks like and how we can customize it using the configuration file. This is a really interesting skill to have as a Red Teamer because tools, uh, especially C2 frameworks, are made to be customized. It doesn't make sense to run it with the default configuration because then you will be exposed and uh, detected and it ruins the purpose of the Red Team operation, which should be covert. All right, um, before we do that, let's... Um, fire up Wireshark and uh, see exactly what the traffic looks like. So I am choosing to listen on the loopback because all my traffic is only on localhost. And we can see that uh, we have some TCP and HTTP calls. Now, because by default I have chosen to use HTTP, we can simply go ahead and filter out anything but HTTP. And straight away, we see some things related to Nimplant. There is a request that uh, is initiated by the implant itself. So let's uh, see how that looks like. Actually, let's uh, filter out for the host header that equals to localhost. So HTTP and HTTP.host should be equal to localhost. So that way we have uh, a bunch of tasks. So if we follow this uh, HTTP stream, we can see that th there's a beacon that's uh, calling the slash task endpoint and we receive status OK from the server. Now I'm going to send a command and then we should see something different here. So let's go to our user interface and type another who am I. Hit enter, command successfully sent, and we've got a response. Now how this translates from network's pr perspective. So here we've got a, we sent the implant sent a call to n the implant server asking for a task and the server this time returned a blob of base64 encoded data and then the implant ran this command which is nothing but who am I and then posted the results to the slash result endpoint with the data as the same uh, encoding and encryption mechanism and then the server said, okay, I received your uh, results. And then it tries to pull for other tasks, but since we didn't have any, we continue the loop. Perfect. Now, how can we map this out to uh, the configuration file? I'm going to stop listening for now. And let's go to the configuration file, which is under the config.taml file. Now, the first thing we notice here is uh, some options about the server. We don't really care about that. Apart from the fact that you might change the port number, I highly discourage changing the uh, interface 
to zero, like zero, 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 zero to listen on all interfaces because that would open your uh, portal to everyone since the application or the web interface doesn't have authentication. This is a big no-no. So we might change the uh, port number, but let's, uh, let's leave it that way for now. And um, for the listener, this is uh, where we specify the type. So because we have HTTP, uh, we could actually see the HTTP traffic, but uh, we could uh, change this to HTTPS, and then we need to specify the certificate path and the key path for SSL. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video because we want to inspect the traffic and see how it looks like. Uh, in Wireshark, I don't want to import anything on Wireshark to de de decrypt the traffic, but anyways, let's continue. So here the host name would be localhost, but it should be the host name of any redirector that you have set up for to redirect traffic to your C2 server. Um, and here you can recognize some of the endpoints. So we have the task path. This is the path, if you recall, that pulls for any tasks. So we could, we could like change this to maybe events and say, well, poll and maybe add some gibberish like um, API v2, something like that. And if you recall, we had a post to slash results for the implant to send the results to the server. So we could like say something benign like log. Um, and for the register path, this path, we didn't find it on Wireshark because I ran it after I uh, generated the or launched the implant. So what we I can do real quick is go to my implant and then kill it. So that way we don't have anything running. I'll make sure that I restart my capture. So we already see some uh, requests from our web interface. I'm just going to close it for now and restart capturing real quick. Perfect. Okay, now let's generate our Let's run our implant. And as you can see, the first thing we notice is a call to slash register. It's sending the register and then the uh, server uh, responds with an ID to affect uh, to this client with the key that's going to be used um, in subsequent calls to encrypt data. The implant will then send uh, the data. We're going to see that in the source code, basically the host name, the user, um, the IP address, etc. And then it starts polling for tasks. If there's a problem in uh, the XOR key that is being used for the first calls, then this would not work. And the implant wouldn't be able to connect to the server. That's because, uh, that's why it says here that there's a file called .zorkey, and this is the key that is being used currently uh, to exchange the first AES encryption key. We're going to see that in the source code. So if we go back to configure.toml, we can actually change this register. And so let's, uh, let's call it API v1 chat. Yeah, why not? Or identify. Let's prepend an OAuth too. Why not? So with that said, let's continue our customization for the framework. The next section is for the implant. This is the uh, behavior of the um, implants that's getting run on the compromised machine. The user agent is also important to change because if you recall, there we had a, a user agent that really stands out. So we need to change that to something like Mozilla, just uh, making this up, perfect. So now that uh, we've changed that, let's uh, actually save this file and just inspect the source code for some of the uh, features of this uh, framework. We can go to the nimplant.nim and try to understand 
you can see that at the registration um, the implant calls back to the server with a bunch of uh, data the IP the username the host etc that's uh, what we've seen before so this blob is actually the data that's being returned which is nothing but the IP the user the host the Windows version the proc name etc and we can see that in the uh, web interface so these are the information that we're talking about you can also find them as well in the information tab what I want to see if is how the server is run if we go to nimplan.py when we use the command server we actually run server.server .server. and essentially we are, we are running just the main function so if we go to server and choose server this is the main function it's using a default key uh, XOR key but when we generate the implants a new XOR key is generated so there's a listener that is being loaded um, let's go to that and this is the uh, data that's getting taken from the configuration file so the type of the listener is it HTTP or HTTPS the IP port register path user agent etc so I I was really curious about this this one is a uh, is a bit cryptic isn't it so what it is so it's getting decompressed decoded etc I wonder where do we use this ident it's kind of an identifier and little you know it's used in the header server so basically when the server responds with an answer this value is getting added an implant c2 server well we don't want uh, that obviously we want something benign something that doesn't pop out and so what we can do is first verify that this value corresponds to an implant c2 server so i'm just going to use uh, python real quick and i'm going to put that in a variable and then i'm just going to run this command obviously i need to import some libraries which i'm going to do real quick but basically we're going to take that x variable so it says here that decompress is not defined that's fine because we can take it from here and we also want to import base64 so if we hit enter what is the value of ident it's nothing but an implant c2 server so what i'd like to do is just change this to ident directly and here i can say well uh, let's change this to apache maybe 2.3.4 i'm just making that up or we can also specify it in a uh, configuration file so we can name it something like listener and then we will call it uh, a server header and we can say i'm sorry yeah we, we can just leave it as it is now and we can now just remove this line we don't need it anymore and in the configuration under the listener category or section I can add a new field called server header and here I'm going to use Apache 2.3.4 all right with that said let's actually restart the uh, server now before i start i restart it uh, well i can i can just say exit and then it 
will automatically ask me if we want to kill all the implants. Yes. So now it's uh, cleaning the database, I guess, and doing some work in the background. We're waiting for it. And now we have the prompt. And we can just go ahead and uh, rerun it. OK, the server is running. I also want to compile a new version. So let me just exit from here. Let's generate or compile. This time, I just want the exe. All right. Now let's run our server, target the HTTP protocol, and run my implant. Do you notice something here? That's right. The register endpoint has now changed to slash API v1 auth to identify. And the poll event is slash event slash poll API v2. We could send a who am I command. And here, the slash log is the result of the implant command. So everything looks as we configured it. And if you see in the user agent, we have exactly the user agents that we in configured. And the server also now returns Apache 2.3.5.4 from the configuration file itself. So this is how we could customize the network traffic so that we don't stand out during a red team operation using Nimplant. Couldn't, if you're watching this video, I'm sorry I ruined your uh, Easter egg on the listener by changing it to make it more configurable. In the next videos, I will probably talk a little bit more about the behavior of the Nimplant and how the XOR key is done and how the uh, encryption is done as well. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.